Okay, so next up, uh, welcome to uh, Balasanka C, or Value, so uh, <laughs> feeling less adventurous. Uh, so Value is going to talk to us about the tool Omnibus that he uses uh, in his daily work at uh, GitLab as a build engineer. Yeah. Thank you, Value. Thank you. Yeah, I guess I'm audible. Okay, so uh, my name is Balashankar, but you can call me Balu. That's too many syllables in my original name. So I go by Balu. Uh, I work as a junior distribution engineer at GitLab. Uh, uh, in my uh, forced life or in my open source life, I'm a Debian developer and I contribute to other projects like uh, GNOME, where I'm a foundation member, and Mozilla regarding their localization efforts. So uh, today I'm going to talk about a tool called uh, Omnibus. So Omnibus in a one-liner, it is a tool that helps you create full stack installers. I'll be explaining what full stack installers and why they are. So uh, the agenda in a brief is why this tool or why full stack installers are needed and then introduction to the tool, uh, the internal architectures, the ter technology used and the process that uh, we take uh, while using this tool and outputs and some other features of it and if time permits uh, I will show a demo or how we use it at GitLab. So to be begin with uh, why this talk or why am I talking about full stack installers or why they are necessary. Uh, one of the mantras of the current century or the current time that we live in is automate everything. We want to minimize the manual work and we want to automate almost any possible steps while developing a software, while releasing it, testing it, monitoring it, whatever it is. So we want to automate everything. So uh, just to know, uh, how many of you work for a product software company? Not a services one, but create a software product. Anyone? Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically, if you are developing a product, one of your worst nightmares is to distribute it among multiple operating systems or uh, multiple architectures and stuff like that. Uh, with the arrival of containers or uh, orchestrations, it has been reduced, but uh, there's still a pressing need for the good old OS packages like Debian package or RPM package that can be deployed easily to production. Uh, because it's a familiar workflow for the uh, operations guys, all the sysadmins. So full stack installers are basically these packages, these OS packages that provides a batteries included uh, feeling. Like uh, you get every software dependencies or everything you need to run your application in a familiar RK format that you can use with your regular package managers. Uh, with Debian, it is the deb format with uh, Red Hat family, the RPM one. So, why this full stack installers or why this uh, batteries included concept is good is because it safeguards you from uh, dependency version mismatch. So, I don't know how many of you were affected by it, but uh, recently there was an issue with libssl lib version upgrade. Basically, libssl 1.1 is in backward compatible with 1.0 and uh, one example I know is Ruby depends on libssl for building. So all of a sudden all the Ruby 2.5 builds started failing because the OSS had upgraded from 1.0 to 1.1 and one fine morning every builds were starting to fail or uh, the production instances were going down. Because the sysadmin guy just did a regular upgrade of their system, uh, they didn't expect something like, to that, like this to happen. And one other advantage of using full stack packages is that uh, almost all of us using a operating system, whether it be a GNU Linux based one or a Mac OS based one, uh, the basic thing we will be familiar with is its package manager. For Debian, you will be using apt or aptitude or apt-get. For uh, the Red Hat family, there is DNF, uh, SUSE has Zipper and all those. So this OS package managers provide you a familiar workflow, whether it be with installation, upgradation, or removal, any of that. So providing your software, so providing the product that you created in the form of an OS package actually helps your customers. 
because you are giving them that they are familiar with. Uh, it's not that Docker or uh, Kubernetes is hard to understand or hard to deploy, but providing it in a native package format actually uh, saves them from learning yet another uh, orchestration tool or yet another deployment tool. So uh, that's one of the advantages of providing a, a full stack package. And the third one is because you are providing a battery single loaded format, because you are bundling everything that your software needs, uh, you are pretty much guaranteeing that the what you are providing will work, will actually work. It does not depend on what machine they are running on, or it does not depend on what uh, init daemon they are using. Okay, my software doesn't work if you are using system D. So such uh, conditions never occur. So basically, this is why uh, we are thinking back to full stack packages or native OS packages. So to uh, that's about full stack packages. So what I am talking about is a tool for creating these packages. Uh, it's called uh, Omnibus. It was developed by Chef Software Inc. That was earlier called as Opscode. So. This is the repository where they uh, do the development. You can visit that repository if you need. Uh, it's a, a free and open source software. It's licensed under uh, Apache 2.0 license. And it follows a uh, Ruby similar DSL, like a DSL that's so close to Ruby. So that's easier to understand and uh, easier to hack upon. OK, so uh, before I start with the project DSL, I will briefly explain why what this tool does so in short this creates a full stack installer that means it uh, it contains your software it contains all the dependencies of your software whether it be software dependencies whether it be uh, front end dependencies like node modules or javascript modules or uh, go libraries or go binaries so it bundles all of this uh, stuff all of the softwares and their dependencies and it convert into it into a package that can be installed on different operating systems. Uh, so if you are creating it on a Debian machine, it gives out a deb package. If if you are running it on a uh, Fedora machine or a Red Hat machine, it gives you an RPM package. So uh, the components include basically the project information, like uh, metadata regarding what the project is and what all are its uh, like name, version, and all those stuff. And in addition, we are uh, describing the dependencies that these projects use. So as I said, it's a Ruby-like syntax. So this is the project DSL, like where we describe what our project is and what it do. So it has a name, maintainer field, the home page, uh, replaces. So people using OS packages may know Sometimes one of your packages may be replacing the older version of another one. So this is an example from GitLab. Because Debian has a native GitLab package, uh, the one uh, GitLab Inc. provides replaces it. Install path is where the software gets installed to, the bundle software gets installed to. And you have the version. And here you are specifying the dependencies, what all dependencies or what all libraries or softwares uh, your application needs to run. So there's one called preparation. There's a PostgreSQL, PostgreSQL is needed. Git, uh, software called GitLab Cookbooks is needed. Gitli is needed. So this is basically the project DSL. It's, it uh, consists of your brief overview of the project and the metadata regarding it and the uh, software dependencies it has. Now. The next step we need to do is we have to instruct Omnibus where to get these softwares, how to build them, and where to install them to. So similar to Project DSL, each of these softwares gets their own uh, definition or manifest file. It's called a software DSL. So this is an example of one library called bzip2. The first range is the name bzip2. The default version is the version we want to use with our software, the license, license fair. And again, these softwares can have other transitive dependencies. Like bzip2 requires the zlib library and OpenSSL to work. So we have those uh, described as the dependencies. And we will be providing software definitions for those dependencies also. Then we do some uh, 
integrity checks we do we specify the md5 sum of the source tarball so omnibus actually validates whether we are installing the correct thing it's a source url and this at the bottom there's a build block so build block is where we actually specify how you want to build this uh, software for, for regular libraries uh, it may be normally you have to configure make and make install uh, for go libraries it may be go get the library name for ruby gems it will be bundle install so it is in the build block that we specify how we want to install each software so this is the build process explained or expanded so basically you specify the environment flags you want to use during the build build uh, if you have some patches to apply you specify those patches then at last you perform your regular make functions like make pass the arguments and use this make file and run make install with these environment variables so this build block actually specifies or it actually describes how you want to build your software where you want to install this software like uh, your application may be expecting all the libraries in certain uh, folder or your assets in certain other folder so you can specify all those in the software dsl specifically in the uh, build portion of it so uh, in short these two are the necessary things for an omnibus project to work or omnibus to convert your software to a uh, package like uh, like we see here you we can provide patches or we can provide overrides and stuff like that if needed like you don't want upstream tarball to hard link a specific location you want a patch to override that you can specify that in a patch file and omnibus will automatically use that uh, while building so uh, that's basically the two uh, method or manifest files that you need so to uh, understand what actually happens when you run omnibus or when you use omnibus so uh, on the left side you see the basic explanation like uh, you have your project dsl you have your software dsls like what all softwares you need so the process is like this first it reads the project definition or the project dsl it understands what the uh, metadata regarding the project is it gets a list of the dependencies then once it gets the list of dependencies it has to go and start collecting these dependencies it may be from an upstream tarball it may be from a git repository or it may be a local file so it fetches the software sources the next step is you actually start building those sources like we specified in the software dsl we have a build process for each software so one by one you start building so the order of building is that the leaf dependencies gets built uh, at first because the softwares that depend on them can be built so you one by one you start building the software once all the software has been built you generate a license information regarding the all the software that are consist or that are uh, included in your package and after that we do something called health check so health check is an important step why because uh, the main reason we are doing full stack installers or full stack packages is that you don't want a dependency on your os libraries like you want to provide a batteries included uh, concept so you want to provide your own libraries and your, your own executables so health check actually verifies that all of your software components or all of your binaries link against the libraries that you provided not the system provided one or not the shared library but the ones you have bundled in your package so health check basically verifies whether your executables are using the bundled libraries or not if it is not it reports that okay this uh, software requires this library and it was not provided or it was not bundled so once health check is completed and health check is satisfactory it goes on to creating the dev file it is using the uh, default package management systems that uh, different operating systems have like for debian it is using dpkg deb uh, the tool dpkg deb to create a package so uh, on a basic idea this is the entire process like you read the project definition you understand when you start collecting the sources of these dependencies then you start building them one by one you generate a collector license information because 
uh, you should not be uh, what violating license of licenses of upstream uh, code then you do a health check to verify everything is using the embedded libraries and not the system libraries then you create a dev package and we have some concepts called cache that are, that I'll explain later so uh, in short this is the process that uh, goes with omnibus the output of this process like what we get at the end of the process are basically three things the one is the platform specific package why it is platform specific is in the sense that if you run omnibus on a debian machine or if you run it on a debian uh, virtual machine or a debian uh, platform the output you get is a dot deb file similarly if you run it in on a uh, fedora machine you get an rpm file you run it in on an arm board with raspbian installed you get an a deb package for arm machines so it provides you the platform specific packages that you can simply install and use that's the first output the second one is a package metadata file uh, this is like a uh, everything included report like it provides the complete information regarding the packages the included softwares their name their upstream url everything the third one is a version manifest file version manifest file is a json file that you can use to verify like which version of the libraries were included what were their licenses or what uh, from where they were downloaded all those so in case one of your softwares were pulled from a git repo not an upstream tarball it will show the git commit that was used to pull the uh, upstream source code so for tarballs it will show the version string so these three are the output that you get out of a uh, omnibus run okay so i mentioned that uh, there was a concept of caching involved uh, this is to make sure because uh, suppose you have a software with 60 dependencies and you made a tiny mistake in writing one of the software definitions the next time you build you don't want the entire process to be repeated like you made a mistake in the 60th uh, software dependency or the definition and you don't want to wait for the whole 15 and ones to be completed just to verify what you changed work so there is something called caching uh, omnibus utilizes two types of cache uh, first one is for the upstream sources in the first step of the omnibus process we see that omnibus downloads the source code whether from upstream tarballs or whether from git repositories so the first cache is for caching these uh, downloaded softwares uh, it is backed by an s3 bucket you can specify an amazon s3 bucket or gcs google cloud storage bucket so what it does is that it caches all the software definitions and in subsequent runs if the versions haven't changed or the git commit shas haven't changed it will simply pull from this uh, bucket and it will not go search hold the internet uh, search the specified url to download the software cache so that's the first type of cache this the second one is a bit more complex uh, it's a cache that's used during the build process so uh, i said the build order the order of how softwares are built is that the leaf dependencies gets built first so like if a depends on b and b depends on c while building c actually gets built first so that b can use it during its own build then b gets built then a gets built so the problem with this is that uh, whenever you want to change something in a you wanted to change some configuration or some build process in a the entire process gets repeated you start with c you build b then then you go to a so each time doing this is time consuming so there is a cache available during the build process uh, what it does is that it uses lightweight git tags it uses git tags to uh, store a snapshot of your uh, built directory so that whenever uh, you are repeating something if the software definition hasn't changed it can simply use that snapshot okay so basically unless cache is invalidated it can use the snapshot how cache is invalidated is that 
uh, if there is a change in the order of bills, suppose you change A depends on C and C depends on B, so the order of bill changed. Now B gets billed first. So if there is a change in the order of bill, the cache gets invalidated. Next one, if there is a change in the process, the entire build process, like uh, you are no longer running make install, you have some other tool to do that process, so there is a change in the software definition, then the cache gets invalidated. And the third one is there is a change in the version of the library. So unless cache gets invalidated in any of this manner, the snapshots that you create, that the omnibus create after each build process can be used to uh, speed up the, repeat, uh, the subsequent builds. So suppose uh, in our A, B and C example, you wanted to make a change in A. Uh, so the next time you run, when omnibus checks, there has been no change in C. So it will simply use that snapshot. Again, there was no change in B, it will use that snapshot. But there was a change in A, so it will rebuild A. So C and B does not get rebuilt over and over. Unless the cache gets invalidated, uh, the snapshots get used and you get faster subsequent builds. So this is the concept of uh, caching. And uh, in addition to the regular package generation, there are some advanced features that Omnibus provides. First one is uh, GPG signing for integrity. You can sign your packages and you can uh, so that your users can confirm that these are the actual ones that you provided, there hasn't been any hindrance or malpractice with it. The next one is change log generation. Uh, this is an experimental feature. Uh, Omnibus can read your git commits. Uh, if you are using a git VCS for your development, it can you read your git commits and automatically generate a change log file that you can ship with the package. The next one is multi-level debugging. You get different levels of debugging uh, what went wrong, like from where the sources were downloaded, whether it was picked from the cache or not, uh, what was the output of the build process. So there is a multi-level debugging. And there's automatic publishing to different backends like uh, Artifactory or uh, you can push to an Amazon or GCS S3 bucket. So these are some of the advanced features that Omnibus provides you once you create your package. Uh, okay, so uh, I will show you, I will show you the repository that we use at GitLab, where we use this for our uh, GitLab uh, package generation. So to summarize uh, the talk, uh, full stack installers are still a great idea because they provide a familiar uh, workflow for the uh, sysop guys, uh, all the operations guys. So. If any of your product developers uh, do take a look at this idea because uh, it can be an easy way to uh, ship your product to different users. Uh, it's a Ruby based easy to understand and rich DSL. Uh, it is almost like plain English and you can simply uh, read and understand from the context what it means. The third one is there's a single general process for all your operating system needs like for Debian, for Fedora, uh, for uh, Red Hat, anything, you can use the same code base and the same uh, process and Omnibus will take care of the rest. And you get a platform specific build process uh, with caching and these advanced features like GPG signing or automatic publishing and all. So let me sh It's visible, right? Okay, so uh, this is uh, one of the repositories that we use at GitLab. Uh, we use this to create packages of our GitLab Community Edition and Enterprise Edition. So uh, any of you using GitLab uh, personally or at work, okay, so uh, you can get, you can self-host GitLab and you can get an entire integrated uh, version controlling system with uh, co continuous integration, continuous uh, deploying and everything integrated. So uh, this is what we use to generate those packages. So all the uh, DSLs, uh, all the DSLs like the project DSL and software DSL goes into the config directory of the repository. 
so uh, first let's see the project dsl okay so uh, because this is a ruby based dsl you can use conditionals and all that so if you are building an enterprise solution package we set certain descriptions and certain metadata and uh, for the uh, community edition we set it differently we have the maintainer and like okay it replaces the native gitlab package because we provide something else there's a runtime dependency on OpenSSH. If it is SUSE, the package is called OpenSSH. If it is not, it's OpenSSH server. And we have all these dependencies that we need to make sure GitLab actually runs without any issues. So uh, all of this gets a software definition in the uh, software folder. Like all the dependencies that we specified in the project folder gets a software definition. Uh, similarly, uh, there's a patches folder for whenever we want to patch some software, we have a patches folder that we specify in the build process. Okay, use this patch to uh, patch your upstream source code. So, yeah, basically that's it. Uh, do take a look at the uh, Chef Omnibus uh, project. Um, yeah. Uh, the second one is the upstream project of the Omnibus. Uh, Seth Chisamore and Christopher Mayer from Opscode or Chef, these were the people who actually uh, built the Omnibus tool. They actually provided a good presentation uh, introducing Omnibus to it. So you can uh, check out that also. So yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. I suggest we let the next speaker set up. Yeah. And